Hello, my name is Denis Fyodorov, and this is the guide to Russian punctuation. If you are a Russian learner and Russian is not your native language after this video, your punctuation skill, knowledge and understanding of Russian punctuation will be much deeper and better than you have right now at this very moment. And to achieve this purpose, we will not be going the traditional way, I will not be presenting you numerous rules and situations one by one. No, in this video I will be presenting information by providing understanding and by comparing Russian and English punctuation. I am able to do that because I work between Russian and English languages, so I am able to teach you to Russian punctuation by not just putting Russian rules into one big long list, but by pointing out and highlighting the most important moments and explaining the most critical differences between Russian and English punctuation systems. And I will be presenting here many examples in English, but will apply Russian punctuation to them. So you will see a lot of sentences in English, but written with Russian punctuation marks. This will make you to understand things much better and easier. That's how we will achieve some fast results here in this video. Ok, let's start. First, a starting point. We need some basis to start off. So, let's form this basis a foundation. And the basis will be your current English punctuation knowledge. I mean, you just take the punctuation skill from English, all the stuff and things you know right now and apply them to Russian. That's it. Let's call it the level zero proficiency in Russian punctuation. So, to achieve this level zero, let's presume that all the punctuation in Russian is exactly the same as in English. And you should place all, all punctu the punctuation marks accordingly. So, we start with uh, this presumption and in the rest of the video I will be making you to change your mind by telling you about the things uh, that we actually do differently in Russian and English. The good news is that Russian and English have much in common in thinking and the way of speaking. So, if you just put all punctuation marks the same as you would do in English, generally mm, your text will not be looking very bad. Again, Russian and English punctuation have much in common. See for yourself, we have the same punctuation marks, we have the same writing from left to right. Uh, many rules and patterns from English uh, language will also fit to Russian. So, if you are good or just understand English punctuation, then you already have a basic Russian punctuation skill. For you, it means that right now uh, you are already not really very bad in Russian punctuation. For everyday needs, of course, like for messengers and living comments, for an educated Russian native speaker, your text will generally look weird and, by the way, in the era of Internet and messengers where when uh, not many native speakers bother themselves with placing punctuation marks, if you put marks like you do it in English, it will not be looking that bad in everyday situations. But let's make it good. So, now we have a basis from where we can start to make your Russian punctuation better. Let's call it level 0. In this video, uh, there will be levels 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4 and we will be going up through these levels in this video. So, to achieve level 0, you need to apply English punctuation and that's it. Nothing hard. So, let's uh, right now achieve the next level 1, a level of basic understanding. Let's call it so. And let's start with the punctuation marks. And which purposes do they follow in Russian language? Here is the English-Russian translated list of four punctuation marks. The link to the PDF that contains this list is in the description. Let's go through this table and learn the most essential information about these punctuation marks and how they are used in Russian. First, uh, marks located in the end of the sentence. Period or the full stop. We call it Точка in Russian is the main mark that simply ends the sentence. Also, we use it for abbreviation, so it is used exactly the same as in English. The only one difference are decimal numbers. If in English for 3.14 we use a point, in Russian we use a comma. 
So period in Russian is used the same except for a decimal separator. Exclamation mark. We call it восклицательный знак in Russian. Is used uh, to indicate strong feelings or high volume in the end of the sentence. So in Russian we use it the same as in English. Question mark. We call it вопросительный знак in Russian. Is used for questions and interrogative phrases and used uh, in the end of the sentence exactly the same as in English. So exclamation mark, восклицательный знак, question mark, вопросительный знак, period, full stop or точка in Russian, they end the sentence. So in Russian we use them exactly the same to end sentences as in English. So I think that uh, there will be no problem for you to use them at all. Now the punctuation marks that are located inside the sentence. Comma, we call it запятая in Russian, is the most common and widely used punctuation mark both in Russian and English. It is used for everything, dividing the parts of the sentence, marking out its parts for intonation purposes and etc. In Russian, sometimes uh, commas are placed the same as in English and sometimes uh, not the same. We will discuss it later, but remember that in Russian we use commas more frequently. Comma is the main and the most frequent punctuation mark and the most important one too. If you do not know what mark to put in the sentence, put a comma there and most likely you would be right. So, a small summary. Comma in Russian language is used sometimes the same as in English, sometimes not. Usually in Russian we use commas more frequently. We will cover the main Russian English comma differences a bit later in this video. Semicolon. We call it точка с запятой in Russian. We use it uh, the same as in English, mainly to divide a sentence into parts if we do not want to place period and have two sentences or when, on some reason, a simple comma cannot be used. Semicolon is usually also needed to divide parts of the sentences that already contain commas. In such situations, another comma will cause a confusion and we use, it a, semi uh, and we use a semicolon in such situations. But also semicolon is, is used when uh, the parts of the sentence are completely different and there is no any connection between them. So, as you see, we use semicolon the same in Russian and English. Colon. We use it двоеточие in Russian. We use it again as in English. Usually, we use colons before enumeration. Also, we use it when the second part of the sentence is explaining or clarifying its first part. The main difference for colon is that uh, in Russian we place it before direct speech. But in English we place a comma. We will discuss it later. Dash. We call it tire in Russian. It is used for several purposes. Generally, we use it the same as in English, but we use it wider and in more situations. That's why we will cover these situations in this video later. The main one difference is that we use dash instead of to be in Russian, because we do not use it to be or its forms like is, are, so we mm, often place a dash instead of them. We will discuss this moment later in this video. Also, dash is used to substitute verbs according to the same scheme. When you won't uh, repeat the same verb, you place dash like I ran to the house, but she to the garden. So here we placed a dash instead of ran in order to not repeat it once more. And this example, you also see another difference in dashes. In English, we merge a dash with the words before and after. But in Russian, we insert a space before dash and after it. Except uh, for these situations, we use dashes the same as in English. Generally, the usage of dash is now increasing in both our languages because it is a mark of emotions, what we lack nowadays, surprise, sudden changing of intonation or a pause. So, it is used for expressive purposes, but in Russian it is used more often and before and after dash we put a space, don't forget that. Hyphen, we call it defis in Russian. We use hyphen to connect words and their parts. We use it mainly the same as in English, so 
to say very, very in Russian, we use also a hyphen. But um, in Russian, we do also have particles. Particle is a part of speech that gives a shade to the word. So some of these particles are connected with the words, uh, they fall with the hyphen. But mechanism is the same here, and probably I even shouldn't mention those particles here. So uh, we use hyphen generally the same in Russian and English. Ellipsis, we call it многоточие in Russian. We use ellipsis uh, the same as in English, usually when the thought is not finished or has suddenly stopped in the middle. Parentheses, uh, we call them skopki in Russian or officially kruglis skopki, but we just say skopki or in English that would be brackets. We use them uh, the same as in English uh, to clarify, uh, explain or complement the thought. So, as in English, we insert uh, in uh, parentheses some single words, uh, phrases or sentences to explain, clarify or to complement something. So, we use parentheses uh, the same. Square brackets. We call them kvadratni skopki uh, in Russian. Don't know why I've actually included them here, because in Russian we don't use them at all. But you may meet them as notes inside citation or to convey transcription or in mathematics. But generally we do not use them. Quotation marks. We call them kavichki in Russian. Well, in Russian and English uh, we use quotation marks differently. But it is not a big deal uh, like before the direct speech. When um, uh, in English we use a comma, in Russian we use a, a colon. And another difference is that in the punctuation mark, uh, comma or a period in Russian is placed outside punctuation marks, but in English inside them. In this video I will teach you how to use quotation marks in Russian. Slash or kasaya черта in Russian. We use it the same as in English to replace or. So it's the same. Apostrophe, we call it apostrophe in Russian, uh, we use it in Russian to convey names. There is no it's, he's uh, in Russian, so we do not need apostrophe. But we use it for names like Kot Divoir uh, or Jana Dark, uh, who is known in English as Joan of Arc, but originally in French her name is written this way. Uh, so, mostly um, in Russian we use apostrophe for names in French. That's it. It means that in real life we do not use apostrophe at all. So, we have revised these, uh, this uh, table. Some marks uh, are used the same as in Russian, some not. Uh, so, here is the quick overview. We use period, exclamation mark and equation mark the same as in English. Note that for decimal numbers we use comma instead of point. We use comma sometimes different, sometimes the same as in English. In comma there is the main difference between Russian and English punctuation systems, so the further part of the video will be mostly devoted to comma usage. Semicolon in Russian we use it the same as in English, uh, colon uh, we use it mainly the same too. Dash uh, is used uh, the same as in English, um, plus there is this uh, difference with that it is used instead of to be in Russian. Also, we enter space before dash and after it. Uh, hyphen, uh, we use it mainly the same as in English. Ellipsis, we use it the same. Parenthesis, uh, we use the same, um, square brackets we don't use in, in everyday situations. Uh, quotation marks, they play the same role in, in, Engl in Russian, but we place them a bit differently. I will explain this stuff in, in this video. Slash is used for the same purposes. Apostrophe we use very, very, very rarely because we use it to convey names. Uh, mostly those are French names. So, as you see, the main difference in, is in comma usage. Also, there is some difference in quotation and a dash, and the further part of the video will be mostly devote, devoted to them. So, that's it for the level 1. Uh, maybe you should go through this information later to consolidate it. That's my advice. But now we move forward. Now it's level 2. Let's call it more understanding. 
I want to revive in your memory several simple concepts before we go to the practical stuff. Let's start with this simple principle. In Russian we use more punctuation. On practice it means uh, that when you are unsure to put or not to put, use or not to use, a punctuation mark you better use it, especially if it is a comma, okay? Now four very basic rules. Punctuation marks are used for four main purposes. To mark out, detach some part of the sentence. To divide a sentence in two parts. To finish the thought. To jump to another idea. We mark out or detach a part of the sentence with parentheses, quotation marks and pair commas and a pair of dashes. Actually, we do it with pair punctuation marks. We take a part of the sentence and place it inside two punctuation marks. The first one is an opening mark, another a closing mark. In such situations, it is important to not to forget about the second mark, and it applies to both Russian and English. We divide sentences into parts with colons, semicolons, dashes and commas not pair marks at this time. Usually we do this when the thought, scene or enacting figure changes. We finish the thought with periods, exclamation and question marks. We use them to complete the sentence. And we jump to another idea by starting another paragraph. So the difference between the Russian and English punctuation rules is within the limits of the rules 1 and 2, which are to mark out, detach some part of the sentence, to divide a sentence into parts, and points uh, 3 and 4 are the same in Russian and English, which are to finish the thought and to jump to another idea. So from this moment we will focus on these two uh, first and second concepts. Now let's go to practice. So, now it's level 3, where we will learn the difference between Russian and English punctuation systems. It means that after this level you will have no obvious punctuation mistakes. Also, this unit will cover some important situations that are probably quite the same in Russian and English, but we need to consolidate those things. So, let's start. And let's start with the main concept in Russian punctuation. Let's call it different subjects in the same sentence. For reference, a subject is someone or some, uh, something that is doing something. An action figure and an object is someone or something that is acted upon. So, the subject acts upon object. Here we will be speaking about subjects. So, an example. The boy was smiling and the girl was crying. And, by the way, I will be explaining things mostly by using English sentences, but Russian punctuation in them, so you will be less distracted by translation and will easier understand this stuff. So, our example. The boy was smiling and the girl was crying. Uh, there are two subjects uh, acting nouns in the sentence. A boy and a girl. So, in the sentences where there are different subjects doing something, in Russian we always place a punctuation mark. Mostly often um, this punctuation mark uh, is a comma. And even the conjunction AND that in Russian plays the same connecting role in the sentence as in English does not help here. We put a comma always in such situations if there are different subjects in the sentence. So, that is a main concept you need to learn about Russian punctuation. If the subject changes, then this part of the sentence should be separated with punctuation mark, usually a comma. On this reason, you will meet very big sentences consisting of smaller parts where there will be two, three, four, five subjects. And these parts uh, with different subjects will always div be divided by commas. Like, uh, the storm has passed, the rain has stopped, and Ivan was about to start to believe that everything was going to be good. So, we have here multiple subjects and multiple commas for 
on this reason. First, the subject was the storm, then rain, then Ivan, then everything. That's the main concept um, that you, you need to understand about Russian grammar, actually. This uh, concept includes many rules, so if you understand it, then you already subconsciously understand those rules. And note that in Russian, the same as in English, uh, the subject is not always very obvious. Like, you may meet something like this, was sleeping and didn't hear that you were knocking the door. In the sentence in this beginning, um, I is missing, but it is implied. So there are two subjects, a hidden I and obvious you. Uh, so when an acting subject is changing in the sentence, a punctuation mark is necessary. So again, every time an acting figure, a subject changes, you always put a punctuation mark. And most often uh, this punctuation mark is a comma. Let's proceed with the, uh, the next thing. And uh, this uh, thing is one of the main differences in Russian and English punctuation systems. Look at these examples. In Russia, there are hordes of bears in the streets. In this video, each contender is singing to another contender. Today you have a job interview. See this comma in the beginning of each sentence in the introductory parts. In Russian, we do not put a comma in such situations in the beginning of the sentence, so they would look the following. So in such situations in the beginning of the sentence, and no matter whether there is in this document, yesterday, in that video, or something else, when in English you put a comma, in Russian you do, you do not put it. So in the beginning of uh, the sentence in its introductory part, you do not need any comma by default. That is an important difference between Russian and English, and this situation is very common. It happens in many sentences, and we need to understand this. So, by default, in Russian, there is no any comma needed in the introductory part of the sentence. Remember that. So, these sentences in Russian would have no comma in the beginning. But there are several situations where you may need it. You may need a comma. The first one is this one. In this document, Social Economic Development of the Russian Federation, all the problems are listed and explained. Now, it is not just in this document, but in this document, Social Economic Development of the Russian Federation. And, by the way, comma here is located after quotation marks for a reason. In Russian we place it this way, so it's not a typo. But back to example. According to rules, in such situations you are the one who decides to use comma or not. So, I would recommend to use comma when this beginning introductory part of the sentence becomes too long. How long? It is up to you to decide. Uh, like, if you feel that it is long, then it is long. So, you have a right to, uh, not to put a comma there, but I advise uh, to put it after such long introductory constructions. And there are uh, two other moments uh, when, in the introductory part of the sentence, comma is needed. The first one concerns parenthetical words and phrases. Uh, we shall cover them soon in more details. But for now, uh, here is an example. We always, no matter what, put a comma before and after such words as please or maybe. So, if such words or phrases are located in the beginning of the sentence, of course, we put a comma there too after these words like please or maybe. Because you know, for these parenthetical words, uh, we always use commas like maybe. You'll have a job interview. Please go to this job interview. And another situation when we need a comma in this uh, beginning of the sentence is when there is a verb located. Example. To continue, pack your things and move to Russia. So, in Russian, if in the introductory beginning part of the sentence there is a verb, we put a comma. So, for a sentence, to learn Russian, you need to play Balalaika. Uh, comma is needed because uh, there is a verb in the introductory part of the sentence. 
So a small summary. In the beginning of the sentence in Russian we do not normally put a comma, no comma, unless it is a parenthetical word or expression, or it contains a verb. You may also decide to put a comma in the, if the introductory part of the sentence is too long. That's it. So that was a situation that belongs to most common differences between Russian and English punctuation systems. So I hope you've understood that. No comma in the beginning of the sentence by default, except for if there is a verb or one of those parenthetical words that always require a comma no matter what. Next come parentheses, uh, actually, so there would be no confusion, let's call those parenthetical words. In the context we need here is a definition from an English dictionary. Parenthesis is a clause, phrase or word inserted into a passage which is already grammatically complete. The thing is that in Russian uh, there is a big class of expressions and words uh, that we insert into the sentence and put commas before them and after them, always. We call them parenthetical words and expressions, uh, these are words and expressions that are located inside the sentence but have no bond with other parts of the sentence. Examples. Maybe. Possibly. Please. No doubt. Of course. I think. That are examples. And we always put these words and other like them inside commas. So in Russian, uh, parenthetical words and expressions uh, play a very great role in punctuation. Here are four common examples. Give me a couple of coins, please. You, I think, are very bad people. We, no doubt, should do this. Of course, I don't believe you. Again, those are English sentences with Russian punctuation applied. So we always put uh, these words like please or maybe inside commas and an opening comma and a closing comma. Uh, but it's, it is not that simple, actually, in real life, because uh, those parenthetical words and phrases can also be a part of the sentence, like I can't please him, I think about you, I have no doubt in your success, he was knocked out of course. I want you to compare these sentences in columns and see the f and feel the difference. If you see a difference in these words usage, and you must see it, I hope you see it, and then we will be able to skip tons of theory. In the example, like from the first column, we put commas uh, around uh, those parenthetical words and expressions. In this second column, those are not parenthetical words and expressions and no comma needed, because these words are part parts of sentences they belong and have a vivid bond with other words in the sentence. So parenthetical words are like inserts that are put inside the sentence and have no bond with other parts of it. And when you can read a sentence in Russian and understand it, you will easily be able to feel what those expressions are, parenthetical words or just parts of the sentence, often adverbs. So again, to identify those words, uh, you need to feel whether the word is connected with other parts of the sentence or not. Through practice, uh, this skill comes to you, so it is not a big problem. Actually, uh, to be good with those parenthetical words and expressions, you should find a list of them in the Russian internet, on a Russian grammar site and intended for Russian native speakers. The idea here is that some of the words that you may think or feel to be parenthetical, they may only seem to be parenthetical. So, along with the list of parenthetical words, sources uh, that you may find in the Russian internet also offer some common words and phrases that are not actually parenthetical and do not require a comma. Pay attention to these two and all this parenthesis uh, stuff will not be a problem for you. The next one. A huge difference between Russian and English punctuation systems is in conjunctions. I mean those conjunctions like because, but, if. Uh, that merge some standalone parts of the sentence, which are officially called independent clauses. So, you know, with those conjunctions, we use commas in Russian. Listen to this. In Russian, before conjunctions such as but, because, so, which, whom, when, if, as, and so on and so forth, 
we put commas except for and and or and sometimes as examples. Markets in developing countries are small but also very dynamic. I came because you called me. It's only unfair if you lose. So before such conjunctions we put a comma. Again, I mean conjunctions that connect uh, parts of the sentence. But for or and and uh, we use a comma like in English unless it is a compound sentence. Remember the stuff about the different subjects and we discuss, uh, that we discussed several minutes ago. Uh, well, in those situations, uh, no and or or can save a sentence from a comma. But for these uh, simple sentences, no comma needed. You and me are friends. Uh, choose a banana or an ice cream. Because those are simple sentences, but for he chose a banana and she chose an ice cream, we need a comma in Russian, because uh, there are different subjects involved. As for enumeration and usage of AND in enumeration, it is the same in Russian and in English. And, by the way, in Russian there is no Oxford comma, and that's why when doing enumeration with AND we do not put a comma before the last item. So, there is no comma before the last item in Russian. So, in Russian, uh, before conjunctions uh, such as but, because, so, which, whom, when, if, and so on and so forth, we put a comma. That is the main visible difference between Russian and English punctuation systems. The main one. Now, let's go to dash. In Russian, we use dashes as in English generally, but also we use a dash uh, to replace is, are, and their forms. I mean, to replace to be. First of all, this is about definitions, of course. Examples from Wikipedia. Русский язык – один из восточнославянских языков, национальный язык русского народа. Russian is an East Slavic language and an official language in Russia, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan and many other unrecognized territories. So, you see this, here is a dash and here is is. So, when it's a definition, after the word you define, you place a dash in Russian instead of is. In Russian, this English text would look this way, Russian, a dash. Is Slavic language and official blah blah blah. So dash replaces forms of to be, like banana is a fruit would be banana dash fruit or banan fruit. But there is an exception you need to know. It's when you shortly describe people, like he is a doctor, you say he doctor, on doctor. So when shortly in a couple of words describing people, we don't use dashes. In other cases, we use them. So, the summary about dash. Dash replaces forms of to be like is and are. But this replacement happens only when those is or are are playing a full-fledged verbs role of the sentence. So, when saying banana is going to be the most consumed fruit, there is also verb going, so of course no dash is required here. But if there was no any going, but banana is the most consumed fruit. In such situations, uh, we use a dash and the sentence becomes this one. Banana dash the most consumed fruit. Now decimal numbers. I'm not sure whether this is a punctuation or not, but I would like to cover numbers in this video. The pi number 3.14 in English, but in Russian it is 3,14. It's how it is written. So. As a decimal, decimal separator, we use comma instead of point. And to pronounce this comma, we use word целая, full, whole. It is how it is translated. So, we say uh, 3,14 for pi number. So, the mechanism of pronunciation for decimal numbers is different in Russian and English. But it is not um, a topic of this video. And what you should remember is that we use comma instead of point in decimal numbers. And also, you know, we write differently big numbers. In English, comma is a separator for big numbers, like 2 million. In Russian, we do not write comma as a separator, because comma it is a separator for decimal numbers. So, 
In big numbers, as a separator, we use space. Here are examples. Now how to address. To address to someone in Russian, we use commas, the same as we use commas in English. But on the reason I often meet in English that people do not use commas when addressing to someone, I have decided to, uh, to say uh, this here. Uh, so when addressing, you put a comma in Russian and English like Bob, come here. But also, I have decided to speak about addressing because of the situation, uh, how to start an email in Russian. Often messages on my email that I get from my fellow subscribers begin with uh, something like this. Uh, they are in English. Hi, Denise, I am writing. That's one of the most common variants. Let's get this straight. In English, uh, the two most common ways uh, to start an email, I think, would be these. Hello, Denise, I am writing, or Dear Denise, I am writing. So, in email greeting, we put a comma before a name because of addressing. In the second situation, this whole construction is addressing, so no comma before name needed. And after the address and intro part, in English we put a comma and then begin the next line with a capital letter. In Russian everything is exactly the same except for this last sign in the greeting part. The thing is that after the greeting part in English you put a comma in the end and then begin a sentence in the next paragraph with a capital letter. In Russian we put here not comma but an exclamation mark. That's the only difference. So this would look uh, this way in Russian. Hi, Denise, I'm writing. Dear Denise, I, I'm writing. That's uh, the difference you need to know about. Everything else is the same. And now the last important thing, uh, quotation marks and their usage. We use them a bit differently in Russian. Uh, let's start with uh, single words. Examples. It takes the whole life to remember how to spell entrepreneur. It takes the whole life to remember how to spell entrepreneur. What are the differences except for this comma? I have explained why we use comma in such situations several minutes ago, in the unit about conjunctions. Uh, the difference is in quotation marks and a period in the end. In Russian we have another quotation marks. They look this way, but they uh, play the same role. But the main difference is that we put a period outside of the quotation marks. That's how we do it. And even if this uh, sentence looked this way, if it takes the whole life to remember how to spell entrepreneur because blah 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 blah, we put a comma outside too. So, in Russian, we put punctuation in the end of quotation, outside of the quotation marks. That's how we do it and that is the main difference in quotation. Now let's proceed to direct speech. He said, be careful what you wish for. Between the English example and how the sentence would look in Russian, the difference is that we use a colon instead of comma. That's how we start direct speech in Russian. The other differences are the same as in the example we had learned before. Different looking quotation marks and a period placed outside of quotation. These were the main differences in quotation between Russian and English. However, if you are writing a book or translating a book into Russian, this info is not enough because there are some other peculiarities and differences which I cannot place inside this video and you will have to do your research. But I have an addition to this. Here are three sentences. He said, be careful what you wish for. In Russian, exclamation mark and question mark stay inside quotation marks. Uh, and that's it for quotation. So, a small summary for this unit. Generally, Russian and English punctuation have much in common, but there are differences, and we went through the main differences in this unit. The main concept that you need to understand is that each subject in the sentence that is doing something 
and it means there is a verb in the sentence that shows this action. It requires a punctuation mark. Usually it is a comma. The main difference is in how sentences in Russian and English look for people like me or you, those who work or do something between Russian and English languages, are how sentences look in the beginning of the sentence and in the middle. Usually in English we place a comma in the introductory part of the sentence, which we do not do in Russian. But in the sentence before, conjunctions uh, that connect parts of the sentence like because, but, which, whom, what, that, and so on, in Russian we put a comma. In other things, uh, Russian and English have much in common in punctuation. And these common situations, we are not learning them in this guide. In fact, even without them, those common situations, this video is pretty long. Now let's proceed to the next level 4 and let's call it mastery. I love to give names to things. In the previous material, I've shown you the main differences between Russian and English punctuation. If you will be following English punctuation rules and learn the things I just explained, then your Russian punctuation will contain much, much less mistakes and inaccuracies. And even for educated native speakers, your emails, letters, messages or whatever else will look fine. But punctuation is a big topic, really. Uh, they write books of many hundreds of pages to explain punctuation rules. So, uh, this video does not offer an answer to any question you might have on Russian punctuation. So, in such situations, when you have problems or doubts about placing punctuation marks properly, I highly advise you uh, to do your research. This research is needed to be done in Russian internet and on the sites on the Russian grammar created for Russian native speakers. But when you are unable to do, the, to do this research or you are in a situation when it is not important to be 100% correct, there is one tip for you. We do not always write articles for newspapers or publish novels. We usually write quick messages or emails. So, if you are unable to do a research, I advise you to use such an instrument as an author mark. First of all, we are not slaves of punctuation. Opposite. Punctuation is needed to serve us, to help us to express our thoughts in writing, to properly place pauses, to emphasize some important parts of the sentence. Punctuation is the one that serves us to convey our thoughts in writing. Good speech, but the reality is always different, and actually we are the slaves of punctuation unless we write for ourselves when the writer and the reader is the same person. But if we do not follow rules and do not place punctuation marks properly, you will be considered as illiterate by other people. So an author mark is not about using the punctuation marks as you desire. You need to follow the rules, but in some situations you can allow yourself a little freedom. You can allow it if the text is literate. If your text is not literate, then they will find one more proof of your literacy. And an author mark means not to miss marks, but contrary, to put extra marks. Usually author mark is used in, situation when, in situations when you want to emphasize some important thought. It's like a handsome young man with a blood-stained knife approached her with a friendly smile. A good situation. A handsome young man, a friendly smile, so romantic for girls, right? Oh, stop, but he has a blood-stained knife. How to emphasize that? We put all the marks here and get this. A handsome young man with a blood-stained knife approached her with a friendly smile. Or to give more emphasis. A handsome young man with a blood-stained knife approached her with a friendly smile. Actually, we do have some choice in punctuation, yes? So we emphasized that bloody red knife and now the sentence makes more sense. This was pretty vivid example, but I often see in books that some great Russian authors uh, placed uh, some additional punctuation marks even on smaller occasions when they are not needed that much. 
And you are a great writer too, at least in your heart, very, very deep inside. So you have a moral right to place a punctuation mark when you think it is needed. I mean, to put it but not miss, okay? So there are author marks, we can place them if we think they are needed. And there is this obvious problem that Russian learners always miss punctuation marks. And this combined leads us to a simple solution. When you are unsure to put or not to put a mark and unable to do a research, just put it down. Write it down and go on with your writing. In Russian, to place a punctuation mark wrongly is better than to miss it. So that's it for this guide. This guide covers a very big amount of information and I tried to, to simplify this stuff as much as I could to simplify so you could understand and your brain could get it, remember it. I've even, I've even excluded sentences in Russian to make you easier to understand these things. So to consolidate these things I've explained uh, you need to watch this video someday later, because not all the information I've explained has been more memorized. Uh, that's how brain works. It doesn't like to do things at one go. It loves repeating. Uh, in Russian, we, we say повторение мать учения, which literally means repeating is the mother of learning. In English, it is practice makes perfect. So watch this video again later to consolidate this uh, information. And thank you for watching, may the force be with you, and bye!